Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is Roger Gilbert in the Rongo Rongo Live video studio reporting for Milling and Grain magazine. It's a pleasure for me today to have in the studio Heidi Hall, who is the Global Technical Services Manager at Amperio PLC here in the UK. Heidi started work with Amperio in 2017. Uh, she is a graduate from the University of Leeds with a BSc Honours in Zoology. And in 2011, she joined the Commercial Nutritional Graduate Scheme with AB Agri Limited, also in the UK here. From there, she took the role of General Nutritionist, moving to, on to Technical Project Manager, where she is today, uh, Alternative Proteins Division of AB Agri. Uh, recently, Heidi had been awarded a Nuffield Scholarship looking at maximising pig gut health and reducing the need for antimicrobials, which is aligned with her research at Amperio. It's very opportune to have Heidi in the studio today because of the global pandemic that's going on at the moment, but also the result of African swine fever, which has affected the uh, pig population or the swine population globally in the last couple of years, particularly in Asia. And now we hear there's porcina, reproductive and respiratory syndrome virus uh, making itself affect more globally. But first, welcome uh, Heidi to the Rongo Rongo Live Studio. Hi Roger, thank you for having me here. Yeah, Heidi, uh, we've picked, picked up on the fact that uh, you're doing research or looking into uh, PRRS, which is porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome. Um, is, is, this is a virus. Uh, we're all aware of viruses and their actions these days. Uh, how important is this virus to the, uh, to the swine or the pig industry globally? Very, yeah, because it's what we call it um, generally. So um, we see different strains globally. Uh, the American strain is, is, has been particularly uh, hard to deal with or high clinical symptoms. Um, they have a different, well, effectively, it reinvents itself where it evolves every three to five years. Uh, we've done work on um, the 173 or 174 um, virus strain. And the new one that we've seen, the 144, which is uh, seemingly creating more clinical problems, more mortality, or it's hard to deal with. That it's still a little bit unknown as to whether that's that's real. Um, but they haven't been able to evaluate it against previous strains as yet. And obviously, uh, different locations around the world feel that they've, uh, you know, they see it differently as well. So genetics feed challenges that, that also can affect how we see these things. Um, but yeah, I mean, because it affects most life stages, if not all. Um, as you've seen, it's respiratory and reproductive, so we know it obviously it has a major effect on sows. Uh, but the grow and finish are heard uh, specifically on the reproduction, uh, sorry, the respiratory side. So it it's, can be, I think in some areas, they're seeing up to 80% in the nursery mortality losses. So that's, oh, that's my true. goodness. Yeah. Uh, maybe totally on the farm, maybe something around 30%. Is, is, Mm. So, so this is uh, following on from African swine fever, which had a huge uh, cost to the the global swine industry. Uh, do you see this is also having a significant uh, cost to the industry? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's billions every year just in the US alone. Mm. Uh, but I mean, African swine fever is still going on. So we've we've got um, colleagues in in Philippines and other parts of Asia that are dealing with this now. And obviously, very recently, there was the, the Germany outbreak in a domestic herd. So there's, so there's even in Europe, we're still seeing uh, effects there. Mm. Uh, but yes, there's a uh, very high cost uh, mm. to, the, to the producers. And, and you're just one supplier or one provider of the research and development that's going on and, and trying to counter uh, these uh, viruses. Uh, what's Amperio done recently that's, that's helping the situation? Yeah, it, we've been involved in some big pieces of work in the US, led by Scott D, uh, and their work is really a, a consortium of researchers, you know, that is, is primary to their focus, mm. looking at both uh, feed transmission, uh, and they've also looked at storage, uh, how far the virus can be transported and still survive. They know it, it survives through feed, uh, or feed materials, and that's really what led to our work. Uh, last year, 
looking at if we could know it with infected feed, so we used the, what uh, Scott's uh, effectively uh, designed or was published on is an ice block model. So they infect the feed and then infect, in feed mitigants we use, such as our product force, amongst others. Um, looking at how well they then stop the infection getting into the animal. And is that is that where we should be focusing on on contaminated feed? Is that is that the uh, Achilles heel of virus transmission? It's definitely a key component. I wouldn't say it's the only one, um, but for us as a as a animal health company, we we want to make sure our animals are, are without these challenges. And therefore, a feed is a vector. You know, it, it, it can come in other ways on the back of the farm. Obviously, foot traffic, uh, mobile traffic, cars, and the and, and things, and wild populations. We've seen that with African swine fever, you know, and even birds, you know, so flu virus, for instance. So there's many, there's many vectors that we need to look at, but feed is very much a component of that uh, and a focus for us. Yeah. So if, um, if we're treating our, our feed like, you've got a product to do that. Uh, does that mean that the animal is treated or has resistance against these other two uh, forms of transmission, do you think? So what we've seen is that we, so in that, the Scott D work, it was PERS, uh, PED, and the Seneca Valley virus. Um, the three viruses were loaded on the bee or contaminated at, at generally uh, levels that would infect animals. So they've done that pre work. And then uh, our product was added at 0.3% or three kilos per tonne, so a standard dose, not a very high one. Um, and then we saw no clinical symptoms of those viruses in the pigs after 15 days. Oh. We, we did some testing on the feed, or they did, they did testing on the feed and oral swabs, and there was um, there was viruses present in the feed, so that is, you know, the test works, it's, it is, uh, contaminated feed uh, and we did see reduction in oral uh, swab positive so it's there is a um, there is work further ongoing within our pario privately to look at mode of action of that so how mm. much uh, in vitro do we need to add to to reduce levels of contamination in feed just building on that work really because for mm. us it's um, once you have an infected animal uh, some of these viruses are not viable, so it's not as if we want people to be treating them yeah. on their own. Yeah. You know, they still go through the regular methods and involving the vet, and that's that's obviously what we would recommend. What we're hoping to do is to limit the challenge the pig or bird, you know, the cattle is facing, yeah. so that they are less likely to become infected. Uh, so it's not necessarily resistance; it's more about biosecurity and hygiene on the unit. Yeah. But it's a critical, feed seems to be a critical factor or a factor uh, in, in controlling uh, this virus uh, by the sounds of it. Yeah, and we have quite a lot of feed companies in the US using uh, these mitigants already because they have uh, antibacterial action as well. So there's obviously a feed mill hygiene programs that are in place to deal with things like salmonella um, and other bacteria that this is standard. And in Europe, we have more, we have. Now we have regulations to do that as well. So, hmm. uh, but force for us is um, has got strong antiviral properties. Yeah. So it's giving you another action for the then use. Hmm. Well, you, there's also other viruses out there, aren't there? There's that epidemic um, diarrhea virus, and that uh, Seneca Valley A. Uh, are these other viruses that that this product or products like this can tackle as well through feed? Yeah, so PEDV, which is the porcine epidemic diarrhea virus, um, that one was has many ha, has been very problematic both in US and Canada uh, over the last six seven years now. Uh, it it causes uh, very high diarrhea in the young uh, pig, nursery pig. So yes, that one's definitely a focus for us, and we're doing more work on that as well elsewhere. Um, mm. I think the Seneca Valley virus, not as well known, um, but the work that Scott D. et al. did um, showed that it lasted longer in feed. So it was potentially, if it was in there, it was potentially more of a risk. And that's why they then looked at that. So African swine fever, uh, we are doing work on that privately 
but it's very hard to do. Level four control that means that effectively government bodies are pretty much the only people that can do that work. Mm. Um, but to answer the question around that manner, uh, effectively all of these viruses are enveloped viruses and they are susceptible to acids. So, they, so if you change the pH, um, become more acidic, they're not happy. And mm. therefore, one of our key components of course is formic acid. And that's how we're able to have an effect there. Mm. The other one that's of interest is avian influenza or bird flu. And we know that's obviously a major issue in, in uh, poultry flocks. You know, it's one of the reasons um, free range um, laying hens had to come indoors in the UK another place a year ago, the last year. Um, and that's also an envelope virus. So it's, it, it not only is pigs something we're looking at, we're also dealing in uh, the, the avian side. Well, there's a lot of attention on viruses uh, uh, the, these days, and uh, it's good to hear of successes like this uh, that we can uh, manage through, particularly through the feed industry, which obviously we're mostly engaged with. But um, Heidi, thank you very, very much for uh, joining us today, and um, good luck with P PFORCE. Is that, uh, I guess that's how you say it. Uh, good luck with that, and thank you very much for all the research you and your colleagues are doing in this area. Thank Thanks, you. Roger. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye-bye.